Okay, next topic for discussion is diabetes mellitus. We're going to talk about type 1 versus type 2 diabetes, the diagnosis, the management, the complications, as well as the management of the complications. Now remember, type 1 diabetes is actually secondary to destruction of the pancreatic beta cells, and it's going to lead to an absolute insulin deficiency, and it's immune-mediated, remember. These patients are going to present with the classic symptoms of polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphasia, also known as the three Ps, and they actually may also have an unexplained weight loss. That's why these patients are going to come in thin. Another thing we want to remember about type 1 diabetes, it's going to have an association with HLA, HLA DR3 and DR4. These patients are usually going to present less th uh, under the age of 30 and no association with obesity. The diagnosis of type 1 and type 2 diabetes are essentially the same, so I only wrote them once here for you. And it's going to be diagnosed with a fasting blood glucose level of higher than 126 on two separate occasions, an oral glucose tolerance test giving them 75 grams of glucose and seeing if they have higher than 200 milligrams per deciliters after two hours. Or we can do a random non-fasting blood glucose level. And if it's higher than 200 with the common symptoms of diabetes, it can also be used to diagnose, except we, all, we have to actually confirm a random test with a fasting test. test. So our, our fasting test of higher than 126 on two separate occasions actually remains our best test for both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Now, our treatment of type 1 diabetes, we're going to give them multiple daily injections. And the multiple daily injections is going to consist of a pre-meal short-acting, such as Lispro or Aspart, and bedtime Glargine. Now, what's really important about our long-term management of type 1 diabetes is that we want to check our hemoglobin A1C every three months and, and maintain a, less, a level less than 7. Any patient that's under 35 or has heart disease, we want to obtain an EKG. We want to do yearly exams for cataracts or retinopathy, but we also have to do yearly exams on pregnant patients or patients that want to get pregnant. We have to screen for thyroid disease. We have to do yearly BUN and creatinine levels for urine microalbumin. We want to manage coronary artery risk factors, such as hypertension, obesity, hyperlipidemia, and smoking. We want to do yearly foot exams for ulcers or peripheral neuropathy, and we want to make sure the patients wear comfortable shoes, so you have to advise them about that, and we want to make sure the patients inspect their feet daily. And we want to actually also remember that the patients get an annual flu shot, <clears throat> as well as being up to date with pneumococcal vaccine. <clears throat> now what's our most common complication, or worst complication, sorry, of diabetes mellitus type 1? it's actually going to be DKA. And DKA is a patient that's going to present with polyuria, polydipsia, a change in mental status with a fruity odor to their breath, Kussmaul's respirations, metabolic acidosis with an anion gap, a serum bicarb less than 15 with urine or serum ketones. This is usually going to be precipitated by a stressor. Our number one precipitator is actually infection. Um, another stressor can actually be surgery. We want to make sure that we order a CBC, electrolytes, a BUN creatinine, glucose, ABG, serum ketones, chest x-ray, a blood culture, a urine culture, and an EKG on any patient that's suspected of DKA if we have this as a CCS case, okay? And our management of DKA is first we're going to place the patient on the ICU depending on the patient's clinical status. And we're going to fluid resuscitate them first. We're going to give them IV insulin via two large bore IVs with aggressive 0.9 saline, three to four liters in eight hours. The hyperkalemia should normalize with the insulin because insulin is actually going to bring down the potassium level. But if hypokalemia develops, which can happen, we're going to actually give potassium in the fluid. But that's only if hypokalemia develops. Now, we don't really want to give bicarbonate in these patients, but in severe cases when it's absolutely necessary, such as bicarbonate going below the level of 7.0, we can add bicarbonate. Only if it's absolutely necessary, because bicarbonate can actually worsen cerebral edema and the potassium problem. So make sure it's absolutely necessary before we give it. And we want to check finger stick blood glucose every two hours. 
Next, I want to talk about type 2 diabetes mellitus. Now remember, to diagnose type 2, it's going to be the same as diagnosis of type 1, except these patients don't have an HLA relationship, but they do actually have a genetic predisposition. And type 2 diabetes is actually an insulin resistance and an inadequate insulin secretion by the pancreas to compensate this insulin resistance. These patients, rather than being less than 30, are usually over the age of 40. And there's no uh, association with HLA, remember. The diagnosis is the same, fasting blood glucose of over 126 on two separate occasions. And either of the other two can be done as well. Our best initial is actually going to be a three-month trial of lifestyle changes, including diet and exercise. Remember, best initial, diet and exercise. If medical therapy is needed, that's when we're going to go to metformin. Now remember, we're only going to go to metformin if diet and exercise does not work. So if it says best initial therapy, we're going to diet and exercise. And if it says best initial medical therapy, that's when we're going to go to metformin. But not for our best initial, it's only going to be our best initial medical therapy. And if metformin is ineffective or, or contraindicated, we're going to give sulfonylureas, okay? When can metformin be contraindicated? In renal insufficiency, any form of acidosis, um, or in severe hypoxia. Because side effects of metformin include lactic acidosis, uh, diarrhea, GI discomfort, um, or weight loss. Now, if our patient has hypertension and diabetes, we're going to start them on an ACE inhibitor. And if a patient has an increased post prandial glucose, we're going to give alpha glucosidase inhibitors, acrobos or miglitol. And remember, a common side effect they ask about alpha glucosidase inhibitors are flatulence as well as uh, elevated LFTs and GI discomfort. Now let's talk about the complications of type 2 diabetes, which are retinopathy, which we're going to manage with a laser photocoagulation an increase in our LDLs, which we have to manage to control our LDLs less than 100. Hypertension, we wanna manage our hypertension with getting our blood pressure less than 140 over 90. We're going to manage our nephropathy by using ACE inhibitors. We are going to manage our neuropathy, if we get it, by using gabapentin. A very common question on the test, Gas, diabetic gastroparesis. We're going to manage this by using either metoclopramide or erythromycin. And our <clears throat> worst complication is actually going to be honk, hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma. Now, hyperosmolar non-ketotic coma, it's going to be a severe hyperglycemia with an increased blood glucose. It's going to be usually over 1,000, but our diagnostic criteria is actually a glucose over, over 600 with a serum pH over 7.3 and a bicarb over 15. What do we have to do first? Just like we did for our DKA, we have to admit these patients to the ICU first and we have to fluid resuscitate them with four to six liters of normal saline within the first eight hours. And if the fluid resuscitation does not work and the glucose actually remains elevated, we can actually add small doses of insulin. We wanna monitor and replete are sodium, potassium, phosphate, and glucose every two hours, and only give IV insulin if the glucose remains elevated. Remember that, okay? And our further diagnostic plan, if we get this, this question on CCS, we have to look for precipitating causes such as ischemia, which needs an EKG, and we also wanna look for infection, which needs blood and urine cultures. We wanna discharge them on low dose insulin with follow up and get them off insulin and start them on oral hypoglycemics in your clinic. And this covers pretty much everything you need in diabetes in under 10 minutes. Enjoy.